What's going on everyone? I'm Tao and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be answering the question, which operating system is right for you? In the operating system world, there are three main choices that you have. There's Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. And Linux has a whole lot of distributions and we're not going to go into every distribution, but I might mention a few specifically. However, we'll take it as a whole in this consideration. I'm going to go over the pros and cons of each operating system first. Then I'm going to go over the decision methodology that I personally have used when determining which operating system I am going to be switching to. This is the start of my switching to Linux series. So if you guys are interested in Linux, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you'll know what I'm up to in the next couple of videos. So starting off, we'll start off with Mac OS. Mac OS has a lot of pros to it actually. One, the setup is easy, although customization is limited to pretty much choosing light or dark theme and the desktop wallpaper. It has very tight integration with the Apple ecosystem, which means that you'll have iMessage integration across all your devices if you're using an iPhone like I have here, or an iPad or any other device similar to that that's made by Apple. Your iMessage will sync across all platforms, which could be really good for certain use cases. Also, it has phone call and FaceTime integration, which can be really useful. AirPods will automatically switch between your Apple devices, which is super cool. The downside is it's very expensive to buy a MacBook because that's what you're gonna have to buy if you want to be in this Apple ecosystem. You also have AirDrop, allows you to transfer files between devices, but pretty much all these are benefits of the Apple ecosystem. One pro is the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite works on Mac OS, as well as Microsoft Office also works on there. They have Visual Studio, some things that aren't necessarily available on Linux. It's probably the most stable of the three, depending on your configuration of Linux. Linux could be just as stable, but I would say it's probably a bit more stable than Windows generally is. I would say that this operating system is great for developers, creatives, and business professionals. Moving on to Windows. Setup is also easy, just like Mac OS, but the customization again is limited. You're pretty much limited to setting your theme color and then light or dark mode. And you can also change the desktop wallpaper with a few certain things you can download like from the Steam um, store. You can get dynamic wallpapers and stuff that you might not necessarily be able to do in macOS, but still it's pretty limited, though a little bit more than macOS might have. It is the most widely supported OS of the three as it's the one in use the most in the world as far as client computing goes. So you're gonna have a lot more video games supporting Windows. Um, you're gonna have more powerful hardware in Windows computers than in Mac OS, not necessarily than in Linux though, but the support for gaming hardware um, and the software for gaming is highly supported on Windows compared to Mac OS or Linux. It also does have WSL2, which is Windows Subsystem for Linux 2. I have a video that I will link up here or here, not sure which side it is. I think it's this side. Anyway, on how I made a video on how to set up Kali Linux in your Windows Subsystem for Linux 2, if you're interested in that. That's come a long way and it's getting pretty good, but it's still not there compared to the native Linux. It runs Adobe Creative Cloud Suite as well, which is another big plus, especially for those of us who are doing video and photo editing. Its ecosystem, its ecosystem with Android is improving. If you have an Android device, they have some pretty cool features like messaging and stuff that they're working on being a lot more compatible with Android. And I'm sure that's gonna get better in the future just as with Windows Subsystem for Linux. I would say Windows is pretty good for gamers, developers, business professionals, and creatives, though probably not as good for business professionals or creatives as Mac OS necessarily, but it really depends on your use case and your personal preference as well as what you've been using. Next, we'll move on to Linux. The setup for Linux ranges from extremely easy with something like Ubuntu or Manjaro Linux, all the way to intermediate or almost difficult with something like Arch Linux, which is my personal favorite. Configuration probably takes the longest of the three, and by this I don't mean the initial installation, but rather customization that you can do. There's just so much from choosing a desktop environment, whether you want a desktop environment or a window manager, how much you want to do through the terminal, etc. All that can take up a lot of time, which is something that I'll be mentioning later. It can be extremely stable if it's configured properly. If configured improperly, it's not. It's a really good um, it's a really good operating system for more experienced users. It doesn't have as much malware 
usually, and that is because there are not as many people who use it. Also, the people who do use it are more advanced and less likely to get tricked by malware, that kind of thing. So I think there's just less malware being written for it so far. But if it gains in popularity, be assured there will be malware written for it. The Adobe Creative Cloud Suite does not work on Linux, which is really bad if you're a creative professional trying to get into Linux, but you also really need Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere Pro, Audition, all those kind of Adobe tools, they just don't work on Linux, which really sucks, honestly. It doesn't have any integration that I know of personally with mobile devices, but it is really great for development overall, for web development, for connecting to servers, because a Linux computer, SSHing to a Linux computer just makes things really easy. The commands will transfer over to most server infrastructure that you'll have in modern day businesses. So it's just really great for that kind of thing. So now that I've given you guys a little rundown on what exactly are the some of the pros of each operating system, I'm gonna go ahead and give you my three criteria for choosing my operating system. The first is friction. And by friction, I mean which OS has the least resistance to me at any given point in using the OS, being able to pick up my computer and get what I want done when I want to get it done. So the first criteria that I have is friction. Basically, which OS has the most has the least resistance to me being able to, at any given time while using the OS, get done what I want to get done when I want to get it done. Basically, things that could be friction could be Windows updates just running whenever, which I haven't really had an issue with personally, but I know some people have. Um, things just not working randomly, like I've had with Windows Subsystem for Linux 2. I know I'm calling out Windows a lot, but that's because that's what I've been using. I know I made a video a while back, linked up here, just now they said, I switched to Linux from Windows, here's why. And I did, but then I switched back to Windows for the entirety of the summer because I needed to use Microsoft Office for college and I don't have a Mac. Wish I did though. Wish I did, but I don't have one. Maybe in the future, hopefully in the future. Anyway, I switched to Windows, then I switched back to Linux and back to Windows because I've been using the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite. So while Windows might have random intermediate friction throughout the lifespan of the product, its initial setup friction is very low. Mac OS's initial setup friction is also very low and I'm pretty sure that it doesn't really have as many stability issues as Windows, making it the ideal candidate for a frictionless experience. There is also Linux, which can have a ton of friction in the very beginning. You might spend a day or a week even customizing your Linux installation, making sure it's stable and everything. But once that initial friction has gotten through, it stays really stable and is a really great OS to just log on, get what you've done, get what you want to get done, done quickly, without interruption, without any, anything randomly breaking on you, at least in my experience. Two other factors that can improve the frictionless experience is integration. Integration with other devices, such as how Windows integrates with Android, or Apple integrates with their iOS and iPad OS devices, really helps reduce friction if you're transitioning from one device to the other. Obviously, this is less with Windows, and it only is a plus if you have an Android device, which I do not. I only have Apple devices. As far as my iPhone, that's the only thing I have. And also sustainability or stability, basically. How stable is it? I would say Linux and Mac OS probably win out of the two, just because you can configure Linux to be so stable as well as Mac OS seems to be pretty stable. Windows has a lot of issues with Windows Update, which make it quite annoying sometimes, but I haven't really had all that many issues with the update process itself, just with a few other things on Linux. The second criteria is privacy. What kind of data or telemetry data does the, your OS the, collect and you know how important is that to you? For me personally, there's a point, not really a hard line that I have that I'm like, I don't want it collecting this. For example, I don't want it collecting anything I'm like typing or putting into the computer, don't want it recording me, which obviously none of the OSs do that now but Windows can send things like speech recognition and all that kind of stuff. I know Apple has at least a more clear commitment to the privacy of its users, which is really great. And Linux, aside from Ubuntu pretty much, doesn't collect any telemetry whatsoever, which makes it great for the privacy focused user. The last area of consideration when choosing your OS is the UI customizability. Now I've already covered that Linux has by far the most amount of customizability when it comes to the OS, 
at the sacrifice of initial friction in the setup process. However, if it, Windows or Mac OS does not have a pleasing user interface, it may be necessary, then they're not gonna be very fun for you to use. Now sure, they'll work, but if it's not a pleasant experience for you to use, why would you wanna bother using it? So maybe switching to Linux, if you want a specific UI that is available in Linux, that you can configure to be exactly how you want it, it that's, maybe that's a good option for you. But for most people, Mac OS or Windows, their UIs are relatively good. Um, I would rate Mac OS's UI probably a nine out of 10 and Windows maybe a six to seven out of 10. Really a blend between Windows and Mac OS would be nice. I saw this video that was, I think it's called Windows 20 or whatever is a concept and it looked like amazing. I was like, if Windows looked this way, I've never not used Windows just because it's like, it looks so good. Uh, Mac OS Big Sur really takes it to the next level as far as UI goes and I like the UI changes in it too. It's one of the things that I really like Mac OS now. Um, I've been able to use it just a little bit, but anyway. So now we get on to my personal OS choice moving forward. As I said, this is the start of a series, or maybe I didn't say that, I don't know. Anyways, this is the first episode in my series of me switching to Linux, why I'm doing, and this is kind of covering why I'm doing that. And it's just kind of an intro to that series. I'm gonna have some more little stages of the series as we go along. The first big reason that I'm switching to Linux is because when I was filming my last video, the How To Hack A Robin Hood account, I was trying to use the Kali Windows subsystem for Linux to run my tool, the Social Engineering Toolkit. And it just didn't work. It like completely would not work. So I tried to uninstall Kali, reinstall Kali, and it wouldn't reinstall. And I just kept having all these random, real weird errors. And so I was like, I'm just gonna reset my computer. So I did, and there goes my whole afternoon pretty much, just because it took me so long troubleshooting. Whereas if I was on Linux, I could have just ran it and it would have worked just fine. So that's one of the main reasons I'm switching to it, just the stability and customizability that Linux has over Windows, and I like the UI of it better. The one downside to Linux that I have is that it doesn't run Adobe Creative Cloud, which I'm still wrestling with that problem. I know it does do DaVinci Resolve, which I used to use for video editing and I still really like, but then it makes me wonder, do I how do I justify paying $20 a month for Creative Cloud subscription because I have a student discount whenever I'm just using like Lightroom. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about that. I may still keep Windows dual booting. Maybe I'll figure out how to do a VM pass-through with graphics card pass-through or something. I'm not sure. Anyways, my plan is to switch to Linux primarily because the friction on a day-to-day -day basis after the initial setup is less. Eventually, I'm hoping to be able to get a Mac. Yes, I know they're overpriced and you pay the Apple tax and everything, but I really love their OS and the integration. And I think the integration of that with my Apple devices that I already have, mainly my iPhone, would allow me to be even more productive as far as just not having to pick up my phone to answer text, just being able to answer it from the computer, to call people from the computer. All the kind of integration that Apple provides, I think will be highly worth it for me in the long run. But for now, until I can get a Mac when the new 16 inch MacBook Pro ARM versions come out, I'm gonna be using Linux and I'm gonna take you guys along with this journey. That's all for today's video. If you like this video, please feel free to leave a thumbs up and comment your thoughts down below on what you think I should do, or if you like my choice, or any other questions you may have about this series or about this video in general. Thank you guys for watching. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you're looking forward to more episodes in this series or just like videos about tech, photography, videography, cybersecurity, and all that great stuff. I'm Tao, and I'll see you in the next video.